Good morning and welcome back to our Catechism Review. Today we're going to be doing uh, the Second Commandment. It's Friday, April 3rd. I'm, I'm my, in my day off close here, but we want to continue with this process. We just heard yesterday that the school year is going to be totally canceled, and I'm not 100% certain what that means for church services, so the confirmation families watching this video, um, stay tuned. We will be uh, trying to figure out how we're going to be doing confirmation, but certainly continue following with these reviews. Uh, again, these reviews aren't intended to be a full uh, course because, as we said in the first video, it's a, it's a learn at home. It says the head of the household teaches to the family. So we want you doing these videos together and going through the pages. Today, uh, we're going to be on pages 67 uh, through 73 um, in your catechism. Uh, talking about the second commandment. So it's important that you follow through and, and, and look at you know the Bible stories. There's discussion questions. Obviously, we can't do the discussion back and forth aspect of this. So a lot of this will just be me sort of highlighting some of the main points uh, and uh, giving some insights to help the uh, instruction go on at home. Uh, the second commandment, uh, as listed here, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Uh, if you're uh, as old as I am or older, you probably learned this differently, as you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Uh, they kind of updated the translation uh, oh, about uh, 20, 25 years ago. And so uh, when I was in school, I learned slightly different. Every now and then when it comes to this one, I have to double check the catechism because if I do it by rote, I will... Uh, start saying it the way I learned it in grade school, and it'll just be a word or two off. But uh, I'm still glad I learned it by rote, by heart in grade school, because it means the same thing, even as they um, update the words. Uh, and then the first thing to note about the explanation, and again, this is something that you should know by heart. You should be able to recite this without looking. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, Use satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. Uh, this sets up kind of the standard template for Luther's explanations. Um, they're all going to start off from here on out with, we should fear and love God. Uh, and we talked about that yesterday when we did the first commandment, that we fear God, meaning recognize his authority to judge. Um, and that's according to the law. We, we should do this because we're commanded. Uh, but then we should love God as a response to his love. We should do it just because uh, out of love. So on one hand, we should obey his commandments because he said so. Um, and on the other hand, we should obey his commandments out of love for him because they express his will for us. So what do all these things mean? Um, first, what is God's name? And the, God gives us his name, and you, you read this in here. There's various Bible studies. Um, it talks about, uh, you, you can read about God saying in the burning bush to Moses, I am, um, in Hebrew, Yahweh. That's sort of God's name, I am. And when Jesus talks about I am the way, I am the good shepherd, um, he uses a lot of I am language. That's one of the ways that he is irritating the scribes and the Pharisees by identifying himself uh, with God. So we talk about Yahweh. Sometimes it's mistranslated Jehovah. Um, I am in, in, in your Bible, in the Old Testament, typically, um, wherever that name of God is, um, it will be translated the Lord with all capital letters. You'll see that in your, in your Bible. Um, it's translating um, the name of God which when they translated the Hebrew scriptures into Greek, the, the, uh, the rabbis decided that the best way to translate that was the Lord. And so that's why we say, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. We're talking about God. And your Bible will designate that with all capital letters. Um, obviously, so Jesus is God. You can say Jesus is the name of God. The main way that we know the name of God is the name that he puts upon us in baptism is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God. Uh, so, uh, so question 42 talks about Yahweh, I am. 
Um, and, you know, Jesus, obviously. Um, but then how we typically use the name of God in our Christian life is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, we, that's the name God puts upon us. Um, you'll see people make the sign of the cross when they hear those words, whether it's in an invocation or a blessing or absolution, whatever it is. Um, God revealed his name so that we could be in relationship with him. This is question 43, because he talks about being our father, um, us being the children of God. Um, you want to know the people that you're in a relationship. How do we know? Moses asked God in the burning bush, who, who are you? Uh, how, how, what should I say to people who ask who sent me? And so God makes himself known. Um, so the first thing that we do is we recognize that that's a serious thing. So when it says... Uh, for instance, we should not curse. Usually that just means, um, you know, words that relate to like damn or hell, where um, you are sitting in God's chair and deciding God's judgments for him. Well, normally when you hear curse words, people aren't seriously saying that, but it's still a violation of this commandment because what that does is trivialize something that is important. Hell and damnation are not just frivolous things to be tossed around. So uh, we honor this commandment by not, A, not saying those things seriously as though we get to judge people's, um, you know, eternal fate, but also not saying things like that frivolously or unseriously. It doesn't matter if you say, well, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it that way. Don't say it that way then, because all you're doing is trivializing something that is, um, that is divine and, and serious and important. Um, when you swear, um, we don't swear by God's name saying, you know, um, that we're binding God to our choices or decisions. Um, when, when we swear, we're saying that God has to keep our promises and so forth. So, and again, we don't do that in all seriousness. You don't attach God's signature to things that God didn't say. Um, uh, and... We don't do it frivolously either. You know, you shouldn't be saying, oh, I swear to God, this is true. Don't do that. Because that's treating something very serious and important and spiritual as just a, a, a toss away, you know, gum wrapper kind of thing. And that trivializes the name of God. So we don't curse. We don't swear. What does it mean to use satanic arts? Um, in some translations, it's practice witchcraft or, or you know, it's hard to translate. Um, this is referring to anything to do with the occult. So, uh, any way that you try to tap into the spiritual world apart from prayer to God the Father through Jesus Christ is forbidden by this commandment. Um, so, what would those things be? That would be like uh, seances, uh, tarot decks, palm readers, um, mediums, uh, Ouija boards. Um, uh, all of these things that are, you know, tell the future or tell your fortune or uh, speak to the dead or things like that, um, they are all forbidden by this commandment. And, and we call them satanic arts, um, but it's basically the occult. Uh, well, why are they forbidden? Well, okay, 99 times out of 100, they're probably fake anyway. Anyone can get up there and say, oh, yes, I'm talking to, you know, the soul of so-and-so. But they're forbidden because they aren't necessarily fake. There is spiritual power um, in the universe that is not um, out for your good and is not um, on God's side, so to speak. And it's to be avoided. Uh, don't tap into it. Um, uh, and nothing good will come of you um, experimenting around with spiritual uh, powers uh, as though what is demonic or satanic um, is just uh, something to, to, to play with. Um, so using satanic arts, um, we say, you know, probably um, it's fake, but maybe it isn't. And if it isn't, then you definitely want to stay away with it, uh, stay away from it. Um, to lie or deceive by his name uh, obviously, to to try and 
come up with an alternate truth to mislead people to to get them to believe things that aren't true. And this really especially talks about teaching um, the truth of the Bible. Um, you know, when we when we teach this, so when when we teach Luther's Catechism, we, we're saying this is what God says in the second commandment. Um, when we read the scriptures in church, this is the word of the Lord. When the pastor gives the sermon, whether it's Pastor Stock or me or whatever pastor, uh, you need to be able to um, say, uh, this is the word of the Lord. And it's, and it's no laughing matter if you mess up. Um, uh, so Wednesday, I, I, I misspoke in the pulpit and, and talked about Herod instead of Pilate uh, saying something. And then I had to go back and uh, afterwards to correct myself. But you don't want to teach anything that's wrong or false in God's name. You're attaching God's signature um, to things that God didn't say then uh, when you lie or deceive by his name. So, again, uh, that's forbidden by the second commandment. But Luther's explanations always talk about in the commandment, here's the things you don't do. Don't use a Ouija board. Don't say, you know, God damn it to something. Don't um, frivolously uh, use his name or use it in a way that is contrary to his truth. But it also includes the way to use it. There's a positive element to this. God gave you his name uh, to use for a reason. This is very different than when you have these law-based um, views, both of Christianity and especially in, in Judaism, uh, in the ancient world where they said, okay, we're going to keep this commandment. We're not going to use the name of God at all. You can't say it. You can't write it. You can't even imply it. We're just going to avoid it altogether because um, that way we can't accidentally break this commandment. And Luther says, no, that, that's missing the point of the commandment. There, there is a, a negative side. Here's what you don't do. But there's a positive side. Here's what you do. Remember, the, the commandment is summarized by love the Lord your God with all of that you are. Uh, and when you love the Lord your God, then out of love, you want to um, talk to him, pray to him, praise him. So we call upon it in every trouble. Um, we talked in the first commandment about God is the one that we look to for every good thing. He's the provider. He's the one that made us ourselves that gives us our identity uh, so when something's going wrong obviously things are going wrong today in the world with this pandemic um, with everything just being up in the air a lot of suffering a lot of struggling um, God gives us his name to call upon in that kind of trouble we should be uh, praying to him uh, and lifting up to him all of our needs all of our fears all of our hopes uh, that's what he wants as our loving father. So we do it because we fear him. He commands us uh, to call upon him, but he also invites us. There's a good reason for us to want to call upon him. So we call upon him in every trouble. We pray. We're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer, but when we get to the Lord's Prayer in this series, we're going to talk about prayer in general. Um, praise, which is simply acknowledging that he is the glorious creator of everything. You praise him for who he is and what he does, and you do it in his name uh, as one who is in relationship with him. Uh, and give thanks. You, you know, your heart is filled with gratitude for all that God has done. So as you go through these pages, um, question 43, what purpose? Um, question 44, so what we don't do, and then what we also do, um, Question 45 talks about some of the names, again, in the Bible, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, you'll see in, in hymns and prayers different things, Adonai, Lord, um, God Most High. Uh, there's different phrases and so forth or in descriptions um, for God, and, and question 45 talks about that. 46 talks about vulgar or coarse language. That's when people break this without... Well, they say, well, I didn't really mean it. I mean, I was just joking around. And, you know, the Bible has things to say about uh, that that you should read in question 46. Um, but then 47 talks about oaths. And this is one that has been controversial in the history of the church because 
if you go to court, you are going to be expected to swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, but nothing but the truth. You know, maybe with your hand uh, on a Bible. Um, and Christians have uh, sometimes differed as to whether that was a good thing to do. In our Lutheran confessions, uh, we acknowledge that because the secular authority is a, a rightful, um, uh, God-pleasing institution, um, that we can, in good conscience, swear that oath as long as we do then uh, tell the truth. Um, um, but, you know, in the scriptures, we certainly would be told not to do that frivolously, and certainly if you are a witness in court, um, you absolutely can't lie if you're going to to take that oath. And that's question 47. Um, and then it gives you a nice prayer here on page 73 that would be an, a, a good thing to do today um, as part of learning the second commandment. So as an exercise, as you're learning this at home, um, by the end of the day, you should, and again, if you repeat this out loud 10 times, you're going to know it, you should be able to recite what's in the little box on page 67. Um, and more and more be thinking about that and letting it take root in your life. And we will continue uh, next week on Monday. Today's Friday, so on Monday we'll continue with the third commandment. Uh, thanks.